everybody, welcome to Rough Stuff, uh, the podcast where we have our friends come on and embarrass themselves by talking about their childhood. I'm one of your co-hosts, Bridget Greenberg, and for the better part of the year I was nine years old, I wore the same Mia Ham jersey every single day. Oh my god. Because she was number nine. Uh, and with me is my co-host. Yes, I'm the other co-host. My name is Sarah Griffith, and I've been to two Smash Mouth concerts by choice as an adult. Cool. Yeah, that's uh, currently still embarrassing. Yeah, it should be. Uh, <laughs> and with us is uh, our good friend and host of the Creature Feature podcast on the How Stuff Works Network, Katie Golden. Hey, I ate snails when I was a baby. Oh, <gasps> no. Oh, how French of you. Whoa. I know. Uh, uh, I ate um, escargot tartare, garden fresh, <laughs> oh. garden, garden to mouth. Oh, my God. That... Katie, Bridget you know, hates Katie, those, the slugs and snails. Yeah, snails are you my know, biggest fear in the world. Like, you know how you want to hear how <laughs> I I've, I know this. So my yeah. mom Ugh. would let me play outside in the backyard. No. And that was her first would, mistake. Yeah, right. right. Uh, shouldn't have trusted me. <laughs> let you outside. Like as soon as I got outside, grabbed a fistful of dirt oh. and shoved it in there. <laughs> um, but also, like I would come back and ha- she's like, "Huh, you have like." little snail no. shells oh around. My. Like, you know like when you no. eat like like a child eats a cake and they get stuff around oh. their mouth yes. but it was snail bits of snails this. i hate this so much we're well, gonna have to leave we're gonna have to cut this well, shirt listen, gonna- <laughs> listen and so my mom was like that's odd i wonder what like she she thought maybe i was just like smushing it around my mouth as children that's sometimes worse. Oh, that's worse that's, that's, worse. that's, that's worse. so much worse but no i was she watched me one time observed me and i i would just i picked up a little snail like investigated oh, it and no. just popped it in there oh oh god yeah that's, okay that's, um i don't i i am so disgusted by the fact that i've done this but um you're talking about it like it's nothing well bridget I, and i are having very I've had to, reactions to this. bridget's dry heaving I, it's my biggest fear in the world yeah so, like growing up in florida when it rained the entire state was just covered in snails and oh. i refused to go outside mm. like i wouldn't go outside until i was sure that the snails were gone or i would have a friend like i would close my eyes and have someone lead me like a blind person oh my god around, so i wouldn't no. have to like step or come in contact or see a snail but in florida it's it's like every day though it rains snails in florida it's like humidity is made out of snails i moved out the second i got a chance (laughs) it's like i gotta get snails uh in my first apartment out here in la it rained and there was a snail on our front door and i never used that front door again for the three years i lived in that apartment i do refuse now this might be sadistic of me but do you know that there's giant giant snails yes i know everything there is to know about my enemy you know i learned a lot where do they live um we're, they're we're, like in the amazon or yeah, like yeah. yeah they're like deep rainforest yeah creatures they're my nightmares uh snails tongues i also know are made out of little teeth jesus mm-hmm. christ um, which, to fear your enemy you have to yeah. know your enemy uh everyone once yeah, i took a marine biology class in high school because that's florida education we learned marine sure. biology it's well, actually kind of cool. so. yeah we're underwater yeah. we might as well know um and everyone thought it'd be funny we were like picking like we had everyone got this like marine mammal they had to do a presentation on and for some reason i had to pick last and everyone knew about my fear and oh. they saved it <gasps> and i had to do a presentation on conch which is a giant sea snail oh um, my well God. you should be afraid of conchs because they can yeah they fucking kill you oh yeah they're horrifying and i did an entire powerpoint presentation not using one picture of that animal because you I just did described it. essentially the elementary school plot like the elementary school version plot of julius caesar like yeah. your comrades <laughs> turned against <laughs> you day, in like yeah. the ides of march it's style how I was bullied. that was the biggest <laughs> bullying move it's, I, uh, it's that children at that age have yeah. their brains have progressed to the point where they have a greater understanding of the world but they haven't fully developed no, empathy, empathy yet. no but also who who wanted to do conch to be perfectly <laughs> I've honest i've never it seems... even heard this term i have so much research conch. to really? do tonight it's a conch uh conch am i yeah. saying oh, right? oh okay i just no, I... there's two ways of pronouncing it there's conch and conch so oh, okay so, so you know, like conch. in lord of the flies the conch shell yes, conch yes, fritters. Yes. it's that it's a marine well my so, cultural yeah. knowledge of that is the spongebob episode yes, yes. yeah, yeah. I'm very the, familiar yeah, conch yeah. Mm-hmm. also conch fritters uh, is that only a thing in florida they're you know, like fried. i know what those two words mean individually but i've never seen them together it's like, like that. calamari but with conch 
That's uh, disgusting. Uh, okay, you people- ate them raw. Let's <laughs> hold on. I'm to get on a high horse. <laughs> well, I don't shit myself anymore either. So um, my people love them and have been trying to get me to eat them forever, and I've like like hovered my hand over them like i'm gonna do it this time and like haven't even been able to touch it oh like, no i wouldn't eat that that uh, sounds awful. yeah that, that people doesn't love sound, them but uh, they're rubbery i would Ugh. try oh, it i would God. try <laughs> it the one no i wouldn't i wouldn't <laughs> my uh my dog ate a snail once and they're very bad for dogs and this is disgusting yeah so br- this is a, i love when we get gross on this, this is show, a though. this is a real trigger warning because it grosses me out about my dog and i yeah love her to death but when i think about it i'm like get away from me uh, <laughs> she ate a snail once and then she was scooting her butt across oh. the floor <gasps> oh. and a like little wormy thing came out oh. uh that was alive and on the floor and i will n- never oh look at her just, the same way wait so, so it passed right through her it passed right through her sam's the shell i guess <laughs> Um, I don't know how that happened or some like there's some like worm in the snail like she yeah, got it like seems a worm. more like a nematode was inside right. the snail yeah I can't imagine a snail would yeah I think it that. was like a parasite yeah and I love her to death she's uh, this dog is the greatest thing in the yeah. world she's a cutie and she's better than all your dogs uh, <laughs> sorry katie's dog cookie oh. uh well you want to <laughs> cookie used to there's this big yeah. pile of compost in my parents backyard and yeah. whenever i would bring cookie over there she would get in that pile and like be digging around it's yeah. like oh cute and it's fine because it's just compost so yeah. she can dig in there and then i was like what, what you doing in there and she like surfaced and had this giant maggot in her oh. mouth <gasps> And she's so it's like Jesus this whole Christ. time she's been digging for grubs and there yeah. are these like huge grubs that yeah, are she's like some kind of boom. I was gonna say every yeah. Lion King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like they're slimy yet satisfying. And then eating it's like I wouldn't let her kiss me after yeah. that. Oh, I just want to no. scream out loud. This is this is <laughs> no. terrible how we started mean, this episode. I love all dogs, but you know, I look at Gracie now and I'm like, hey, whatever it pops in my head, I'm like, hey, you had a worm same. come out of your, your butt. butt. I, we all saw you had an alien. You got alien. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got full alien. Well, puppies often have uh, worms because yeah. they're immune. S- they, they just can't. Right. They're like fight it. Yeah. And they're especially s- puppies of strays because the yeah. mom has worms and then they're just born with worms. And it's just horrible yeah I this, don't, this is great <laughs> this is <laughs> if you're just joining us I'm so sorry this is so <laughs> gross uh wow just bear with it and we'll get to stuff that's less gross less gross uh let's let's start it's all uphill from it's, here. All, it's all it's all uh, upworm. We, it has to be it has to be <laughs> we can't go any lower yeah uh i have a donut in front of me that i don't think i'm gonna eat anymore <laughs> <laughs> uh i think i'm dead uh katie let's 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 turn it to you and oh your, yeah for the love of god yeah uh well you ate snails so you started it but uh yeah I did. As, as you grew up uh tell us like what what was a young Katie Golden like? What were here? Let's start with like, what would you describe if you had to isolate like an like, awkward period in mm-hmm. your life? What oh. do you think that would be? Wait, there one awkward. I mean, it's still Look, going. I mean, yeah, it's always still it's, going. None of us are normal. This is it's ride or die awkward. <laughs> I, ride I, or I die. was born yeah. awkward. I'm still awkward. I'm gonna die. Yeah, the awkward I mean, life. I, I guess in all honesty, I am. When was less, your peak? My when? peak awkwardness. <sighs> I mean, I would guess probably sixth grade, to be honest, because that's, that's when yeah. I that's when I was like, like, whoops, OCD, just like full yeah. blown childhood OCD, which yeah. it took a while to figure out that's what was going on with yeah, like washing I feel my like hands that, 10 yeah. times a day. Mm. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, I guess that could be described as awkward. Middle school was awkward. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sixth the- grade was like and I was at a new school, oh. bullied, very awkward. <sighs> Um, had a terrible phobia of mummies and that's the year that you learn about mummies so much like those kids tormented you with the with the conch right uh they tormented me with mummies and that's like uh, kind of a cute thing to be afraid of though like that's very like i feel like you know little girl like i don't know like in a fairy tale yeah. like you would also be afraid of mummies what what specifically about mummies because that was always the least scary halloween thing to me well it's not 
so it, much the wrapped like the, up mummies, right. but it's the they're the so petrified. crunchy. Yeah. Right. The, they're like people jerky, and I can't <laughs> deal with the that. The texture of the mummy. The texture of the mummy, the look the fixed grimace of death. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean mummies, look, they are gross. Yeah. But it was to the it, point where if there was like yeah. if there was a book on mummies and it touched it, like this is how O C D works, is you take a normal fear right. and then it becomes something irrational. So if a book about mummies touched another book then that book was tainted right mm. so it started this like domino effect of everything in my life is tainted, <laughs> tainted and i have mummies. to just shut myself in my room and cry and, oh, and go like no. will i ever be clean <laughs> <laughs> oh no yeah but so that was awkward um but I think before then I was awkward, but I lacked the self awareness. Yeah, so the golden years. Right. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, be, you yeah. become aware at some point. This right. is like yeah. the next stop on like a real person's hero's journey. Is like you know you get to the point of like your first moment of awakening of like oh my god I'm the most embarrassing right. goddamn person has ever lived. Right. Everything about me is weird and wrong, and I don't fit in in any other aspect. And also, right. mummies are scary. Right. Yeah. That that tether ball <laughs> hits you in the face the fifth time. You're like. <laughs> Oh no! Oh. Wait, I'm the loser. Right, right. movies yeah. have taught me this is I'm the right. I'm the loser. I one. think it's when it starts like you can stop passing it off as like cute little kid stuff. Right, right. And then yeah. you're like, it's right. when you stop being adorable yeah. about it, and you're like, no, now I'm just a weirdo. Yeah, like, it didn't help too that I, I was in a classroom full of like savants where they were like already dating. It was sixth grade. Right. They oh. all had boyfriends. Yes, I. Yeah. They wore tank tops. And like, or they wore to- tank tops. I'm sorry. <laughs> they were the cool girls because they wore tank tops. Yeah. No, what were the spaghetti straps? Spaghetti straps. Oh, yeah. those- they let you have those in your school? Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, in sixth grade for some reason. That's like the big taboo of all dress yeah. code. Yeah, the sp- no spaghetti the, straps. Yeah. Well, the school was like soccer mom central, so I guess they kind of lobbied to allow their girls to be sexy or something. <laughs> but like, um, and and so like, like they all had boyfriends. They're like, have you ever had a boyfriend? I'm like, I'm 12. Right? Yeah, yeah. So no. <laughs> um, yeah. But there, like, there was a lot of dating in my middle school too. And at the time yeah. I was like, God, why don't I have a boyfriend? And now when I look back at it, I'm like, what were these people even doing? Right. Like on, de- like, I mean, I, I know what they were like doing, but like, yeah. the, you look yeah. like middle school, you're what? Like 11, 12, 13, yeah. 14 at right. the latest. Well, what they were doing to be clear is pounding their lips Dry lips together, yeah. right? Like a couple of like slices <laughs> yeah. of well, bread. with braces, yeah, uh, just, just, just metal a, and, just and dry mouth, clanking just together. Well, together. I knew people that like, and we kind of talked about this in in other episodes. But they were doing like blowies at bar mitzvahs and stuff, and like You're kidding. These, the girl, I'm not joking. And in the girls, middle school, yes, and then like uh. girls come to school and be like, yeah, well, like he fingered me or whatever. And I'm looking back on that now, and it's like. Did he like do that, or did he just he put his, his hand in her belly pants? button? <laughs> yeah, like and like, what do you like? What do you know about a blowjob? He like at, he I fingered my navel. Yeah, basically, it's I like, don't think so. I think that was a lot. Maybe some because there are certainly like some some kids who are sexually precocious sure but i feel like yeah. a lot of that is talking a lot of talk oh, or, or yeah. like it's a, a heavy exaggeration of what may right, have actually right. happened. Yeah. Right. But I do. I remember feeling kind of left out from that. But not that like I was even really all that attracted to like any of the guys. In my like there was a like I had a, a couple of crushes and stuff. But like I don't think I, I would have been like, yeah, let's go to you know Bridget's bat mitzvah this weekend and like fucking go crazy. Like yeah, no, my bat mitzvah I'm, was lit. <laughs> like I, I haven't even started a period yet. Let alone yeah. what am I? Yeah. <laughs> what am I gonna do? I had like no interest in boys until high school. And at that point, I was like, well, I'm clearly undateable because (laughs) I, 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 you know, people have told me I'm flat chested and like look like and I did. To be fair, I was looking at my yearbook a few weeks ago and I looked in high school. I looked like a 10 year old. Mm. So. I think it's kind of understandable why I wasn't dating that much in high school. Yeah. Yeah. I looked like a much younger child. And then somehow, like even my senior, in my senior year of high school, I was starting to look a little bit less like a 12 year old. And then somehow in college, I turned it around and looked (laughs) vaguely like an adult. So that was. Okay. Yeah. um, But so it's kind of like when I was a freshman in high school, I looked like a, a, a baby and I you know just like right. a literal infant so no one would touch me yeah I feel, <laughs> I feel like I was very strange looking 
until like, uh, oh, this is hard. Probably like middle of 10th grade is when I got my braces off. And that's when I like figured oh out. Oh my how God. To, that's such a day. Isn't it's such it? a day. And uh, you figured out just like, not, I didn't figure anything out. That's a lie. I just like learned that like I shouldn't have a middle part and that's about it. Yeah. That's what I learned about myself. Graduating past the middle part, I think is a, that's it's a, a big, major part of growing up for many, many, many girls. women. Yeah. yeah. And, but by that point, like 10th grade was way too far to like start understanding how to look appropriate. Right. Yeah. Like, right. Uh, not appropriate, uh, but like good, I guess. I don't yeah. know what word I'm trying to use. And by that point I was just like a bro. I, yeah. Like and I was like, well, I fucked up everything up until this point, so college is gonna be my time. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> well, yeah, and I mean, so my my uniform of choice yeah. was whatever cute shirt my mom carefully chose out for right. me, covered by my brother's giant sweatshirt, jeans, cool. and hang out with the metalhead kids and the oh, gamer oh, kids. Oh, yeah. the metalhead kids and the gamer Were those yeah. one group or? No, there were two groups. There was some, obviously some intersection because right, I was yeah. part of both groups. But yeah, um, but yeah it, it was. It, were you a metalhead? I, well, so or were I, you was, a poser? I was, <laughs> I was into it. And then my dad was like. <laughs> no. um, what is this so, devil music? So no dancing? my, my, my I'm partially Jewish, right. and so I was listening to some. <laughs> some um, That's a great way Ger- to say that. <laughs> I, my, I was oh, listening to some German okay, metal. The- it's called Rammstein. And, oh my uh, God. and then my dad walked in the room and he's like, why are you listening to mo- Nazi music? <laughs> I was like, it's not Nazi music, it's metal. And my dad is like, this is the music that Nazis listen to. And I, I it's was... It's not totally wrong, but... <laughs> I felt really bad and guilty, so I stopped listening to it. That is... And now I a listen. Very to, Jewish story. I know. <laughs> I, mean, I don't. My dad's a great guy. He wasn't mad at me or anything. He was just like concerned, you know, concerned right. yeah. father. Right. He's doing it in a pretty nice way. But I felt bad because I didn't want to hurt my dad's feeling, and right. I certainly didn't want to be a Nazi. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but then uh, I um, learned to like metal again as yeah. an adult. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I'll, I, but I still kind of don't listen to German metal because <laughs> right, you, it, yeah, you have that, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just the sappy, is, sappy progressive metal with people. right, well, yeah. yeah. It's weird how that you know divide. There's that like divide of like the dead Kennedys, fuck off Nazi punks, and then yeah. the Nazis from uh, Green Room. To be clear, like Ra- Rammstein is not a Nazi band. I, I think it's. P- Potentially Nazis listen to it because it's in German and they're dumb as shit. Yeah. (laughs) And they're like, it's Germans yelling. This must be Nazis like, but they don't. Meanwhile, it's illegal to do anything with Nazis in Germany. In Germany, you're the least likely to find (laughs) Nazis. It's pretty hard line. Um, uh... But yeah, so I I mean, actually, my high school experience wasn't so bad. Um, I mean, I was not like a Casanova I didn't really <laughs> date all that much um I remember one of the the dates I went on I literally spent as little time as I could touching the other person so <laughs> he was like at the end of because I think this is prom or something and at the end of the date he was like I feel like I've failed I was like what oh, what do you mean whoa. I was totally confused and now I kind of resent that because like yeah. he was failed He's like, yeah, it was like, like this, what do you mean? Like you didn't boy. get to honk a boob or whatever? <laughs> yeah. like, no, I, I've been on a date that has ended with the guy saying something along the lines of like, so um, you're not interested in me, but I do want to say thanks for uh, coming out with me tonight. And I was like, oh man, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I just thought, but you know, at the time I was like, let me give it the old college try. Like maybe, but like, it, like no, and I should have just said no from the jump. But then... Here's yeah. a hot tip for you guys. Um, <laughs> don't use guilt or try to make yourself seem pathetic because even if the girl uh, acquiesces to it because she feels sorry for you, that's not the you don't want that's that. Not that's a true. solid foundation. I'm not for going a relationship. home with you. That's for sure. Yeah. Right. So like, even if you're like you, if you make 
a girl or I mean this applies to girls too but yeah. like I don't want to be um, a right. misandrist about right, this right. But, <laughs> but just like you don't want the person to feel sorry for you that's no pity that's sex not, is never great no, yeah. and honestly they deserve better and also you deserve better you should have yeah. someone be super into you like you yeah. know it's like and if it doesn't look everyone gets rejected the the hottest person will also get rejected because like yeah. they're yeah. not everyone's cup of tea so you know you're gonna get rejected and just like move on you you know it's yeah. just not a good match someone's gonna really like you for well, you unless you're a total piece of shit know what i love about this one that we're recording right now we went from butt worms to solid <laughs> dating advice <laughs> look here's a, here's another here's another hot tip Cure your butt worms before yeah. you before go before you go, go out yeah. on dating. Yeah, make sure that that would end yeah. the date pretty fast. Yeah. I think yeah. if I, I saw mean, a look, worm crawl out of somebody's butthole, <laughs> like here's that's the for thing. sure. Scooting along the floor. And if I'm at that yeah. point in the date where I can see your butthole and a worm crawls out <laughs> right. of you, I will still say, you know what? I got to check, pack please. It in, that's yeah. where. Here's the thing, you guys. That's where I have to say goodnight. When you share, when you when you open up enough to someone that you're looking at each other's buttholes, <laughs> <laughs> you really sh- open the up. The least you know? thing you can. <laughs> do is like cure your butt worms yeah. there's no shame make sure it's clean right there's no shame in having butt worms it's just respecting your your, your partner. partner you don't yeah. want them to be surprised by butt worms is what i'm saying no yeah, no if you have them say something before yeah. and then don't be surprised if that person leaves right and don't make yes. them feel bad about it yeah. and it's also okay not to tell them about the butt worms as long as you're curing them Yes. Like as long if as you, you get, handle it before. Yeah. Right. Like you don't have to be like, I handled a, a stray cat, then I licked my hands, and now I have butt worms on your first date. <laughs> not I don't, a dinner. Not a no. dinner. No, no. <laughs> it's not going to go well for you. <laughs> I'm really good at giving dating advice. And honestly, so I, I don't I, I don't disagree with anything yeah, you have said for, so far. Me too for two. These are right? things yeah. that, yeah, are I hope people are listening. Solid Write this shit down. Wear clean uh, underwear. Also great advice. Yeah. Uh, so this person you went on a date with in high school, though, who I hope didn't have butt worms, but did do your the first thing that you warned against. Right. Uh, were you like making sure to stay away from him because you didn't like like him, or were you so was it the like anxiety thing of being so in your head? You're just like I don't I don't know what the normal thing to do is, so I'm just gonna. Not yeah do. <laughs> all of that so yeah. like i didn't actually i wasn't attracted to him but to yeah. be fair i wasn't really attracted to anyone that much in high school like maybe little crushes and yeah. i was attracted yeah. to like celebrities like right. had a big crush on elijah wood because like uh, of course you did i know right <laughs> Well, okay, my sister though, because I'm still to this day hold a flame for Daniel Radcliffe, and I feel oh, nice. like yeah, 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 it's like it's the, the same, same sort yeah. of it's like almost the same, same person, kind of the <laughs> Hobbit man of yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and my theory is, I, I'm no, I really hate to say, I don't mean any disrespect. I'm no longer attracted to Elijah Wood. Sure, yeah. Um, it's, I mean, look, no disrespect, right. but I think back then it's because <laughs> he was first of all a very young actor, and right. like for a young like a. 14 year old girl it's exactly sort of like, like exactly. your non-threatening yeah. just sort of like you Gettable, know you know yeah yeah like a little a cute little hobbit yeah. you yeah. know just like not just can't hurt a fly sort of right. thing so non-threatening um so like i was it wasn't so much that i wasn't attracted to boys in high school was, i was so scared of them that right. just nothing was gonna happen because i was like trying to maintain i still do this to some extent where i like maintain a personal bubble right yeah like of maybe about a foot and a half yeah which to be fair so like sharks can use electricity <laughs> listen right. I, i'm going somewhere with this stay with me <laughs> no no i yeah sharks can use uh they have electro reception which yeah. allows them to feel electrical uh pulses coming off of right. prey and they're right. they're their ability to do that is about two two feet away two to three feet away so i it's really just like sort of that was your shark protection right like if i'm just saying i'm just saying maybe if there were shark people i'd be safe (laughs) you'd be safe because they would all they wouldn't see me because right yeah (laughs) because you're dead inside because i'm dead inside (laughs) (laughs) Uh, that yeah i feel like that is very like a universal first date thing especially early on where you're just like so nervous and you don't know what to do so you're just like 
stay as far away from the person yeah. right. as you're possible because you're like well if we get close i don't know what happens next but you know what we are oh god i'm gonna sound so fucking stupid guys i'm so bad at science but we are mammals i know that much <laughs> And don't we have like pheromones that we give off and we can we can like it's like our animal instinct and like our human nature that we have developed for literally like centuries. <laughs> I'm so stupid. We've been I'm around like, for centuries. <laughs> centuries. I, I, I don't know like the whatever. I'm saying that like perhaps you, even you thousands can, of years. Maybe. <laughs> Who's to say? Not me. <laughs> but like you can get a vibe off of a person like pretty right yeah. away. And looking back on it like I did I've been on a number of dates where yeah like I felt like well I don't like I don't really like him but I don't know maybe but it's like no just I should have just stuck with my first fucking yeah. instinct and oh. saved myself the trouble of going out because like if I know from the minute that you ask me out that like I'm not really interested in you like that like yeah. it's it, I don't think it's going to be one day I'm like you know what I was completely wrong about yeah. him I definitely oh, want to yeah. put here's another, my mouth on his here, right now here's another hot dating tip on this the dating podcast yeah. <laughs> um, so like there's two things one is that it's true that with someone you're not necessarily going to feel an instant spark or an instant connection you shouldn't be waiting for like right. someone who's like oh I j it just feels like a spark but you should at least be somewhat comfortable with them yeah. so like yeah. if you're feeling a lot of just negative feelings yeah. like where it's just like I'm so uncomfortable and beyond just the in like I'm meeting someone so I'm kind of uncomfortable that's right. normal but like if you're just like I don't like you're thinking about a second date and and beyond just the nerves of a second date. You're just like, oh, I'm I really want to do it. Yeah. really don't want to do it. I would say that's a sign. So but, it's like it's kind of it's one of these like weird balances where yeah. like you can't, you know. Uh, yeah. You're on the dating podcast. You're on the dating <laughs> date, podcast. Date tips. To, to merge our themes here uh, of embarrassment and dates and no worms. Unfortunately, this is a wormless story. God but damn one, it. Ugh. I know. Bridget. It's, I mean, you can turn it just off here. Just save it. Yeah. yeah. Skip ahead 15 uh, no, seconds. No, this is genuinely uh, maybe one of the worst things I've ever done in a <gasps> dating scenario, Bridget. which I will never forgive myself for. But I went, so I went on a, on one date with a person who I was like, all right, I'm not into this date. And in my mind, I knew. But for some reason, I thought I was going to try this new thing where I'm not going to end something over or like say no over text. I'm going to do it in person. I don't know why. This yeah, it was yeah. one date. I could. I was. Oh, I was no. very much in the clear. No, no, no. One date is is the it's, it's like the it's, zone where you can just zone. text oh, them. Oh, yeah. It was, yeah. It and you been, give just kind of a firm handshake, like okay oh, wait no it was i was like okay that date was fine so i'll go on a second date and see like give it another shot sure mm. yeah and that's when i'll end it so we went on two dates wasn't really feeling it and then oh, i was like no. and then i had the thought like let me do this in in person which oh. was dumb so we went on four more dates because i was too <gasps> chicken shit to oh, say no. you had six dates no, no. yeah we went on four more dates because then like, you're getting into the zone where you where can't I text can't um, and then oh, I was like, no. this has gone too far. You chicken out of saying like, look, this is, I, I'm not feeling this. Uh, and I appreciate you as a friend. Thanks uh, for the meals. Yeah. But uh, no, I would, I like insisted on paying for meals yeah, uh, yeah, at I've that done point. That. Yeah. I, was, I, I insisted for paying for a lot of very expensive meals. Uh, yeah. Uh, don't give uh, them anything yeah. to guilt you over. Yeah, yeah, no, I, no, I, I, I was trying to be a good person in this time in my life, and I realized that's probably not for me. Yeah. Um, so, uh, well, there's I, being a good person, and there's breaking up with someone in person after one day. After one day, which yeah, is no, just, I, it was. You don't need to do that. It was a bad thought, and uh, it was well intentioned. It was though. a well intentioned, uh, poor decision that I've made. And then I was like, all right, Bridget, this, it's been like five or six dates you gotta you gotta stop this you gotta end it, you man. gotta yeah i think as after the seventh date you, you're common law married yeah you, yeah you got a woman up and like end this yeah. and right. i was like great so i set a date and i was like i'm gonna do it in person here and then days later we're getting closer to the date and i realized that date was valentine's day <gasps> the day oh. i said unknowingly was valentine's day like two oh. days before the day that i set so um, you got married to him. So now we're married. Uh, we have several <laughs> children. Uh, uh, I, no, I moved, changed my name. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I then did it over text because I realized it was Valentine's Day and I was like, well, so long for being a good person. <laughs> yeah, let me so just, let me just ruin adult. this for let him. Let me just like backtrack this whole thing. 
Yeah. Um, and that was one of the worst things I've ever done Aww. Uh, in that scenario. So, yeah, you're right. Just end it. Just if you're not feeling it. Yeah. And, you know, there is something it. to say about like, well, I don't really like them right now, but maybe if we hang out like in a friend situation and we're yeah. like around other people and then I warm up to them, that's one thing. But like, oh, my God, if you ask it, me on a date and my answer is just fucking no, <laughs> it's just like, I'm sorry. No, please don't spend money on me. I'm not going to yeah. have sex with you. Um, yeah. No, it wasn't a great move on my part. <laughs> But let's that uh, man. I hate that I said that on podcast. I think about this like <laughs> so you're, every you're in a lot of I pain. Think, I can see it look, in your face. I think <laughs> everyone has to go through learning how to break it off with yeah. someone, especially like. Oh, I was way too old to do this. This was like last year, by the way. That's okay, <laughs> dude. You're you're young. You're yeah, like a baby too. I, I'm, I'm so. a baby. Don't you know? Don't listen no to my, no it's my worst right. first date is still around the corner i just know i've yeah. i've got so many more Ugh. and dating when you're young too is like just so bad because like uh, this is something i because i didn't date in like middle school or high school because mo- like, i'm not joking i would say 90 percent of the guys that went to my high school were legitimately out of the closet gay mm. um so it was slim pickings and at that point it's like well am i gonna hook up with the same guy that three other girls <laughs> in my class have you know it's just like yeah. For, I was like, you know what? In high school, I've heard that wieners get get whittled down by like <laughs> yeah. they, we're, we're with multiple partners. Yeah, they're, they're wieners they get whittled sort down, sort of like a like a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So I had to learn how to like date in college, which is like kind of too late. God, I remember I had my first and my only like serious boyfriend in college, and um, it was like they. Oh God, my parents listen to this, but um, my friends were like you've never like given someone head. I'm like, no, I, there was no one to receive my mouth. There was no one, like no, no one in middle school wanted to touch me. Understandable. I was disgusting. And then high school, they were blowing each other. So no, I never like had to like, they, like literally they had to teach me like a scene in a movie. Uh, where, and I did not ask for this by, this is completely unprompted, uh, which is even more embarrassing. Cause we want to think of us like girls. I'm like nervous. I don't know what I'm doing. Like help me out. No, they just were like, Sarah, sit down. And then they, God. Jesus no. Christ. Oh, popsicles from the freezer. Oh. And literally all took terms no. like, oh, if you do it like this, or like, oh, guys love it when you blah, blah, blah. And I just That's, had to sit there and take like it. A, that sounds like a friends. comedy where it's They were like, being helpful, though. Like, they were, be, they, they was coming from a good place. Yeah. And it was true that I was like, I've never really seen this outside of like porn at this point. Did but you think that, that wieners my, melt? <laughs> well, yes, exactly. That was a huge. But I was. It was so embarrassing. It, it was so embarrassing because yeah, I'm like, I'm 18 years old, and you girls are teaching me like this is some fucking ABC Family. Yeah, like, you gotta do it fast, and then stick an that family. thing back yeah, in the freezer, right. or else his dick will literally melt off. Yeah. And it, it doesn't taste like anything either. I thought it would be like cherry or blueberry oh, yeah, flavored yeah. or something. Yeah, no, it was like I, I literally just like sat there. I think with my hands folded in my lap and just watched all these girls perform oral sex on different phallic shaped items in our apartment, and I was like. Girls, I, I'd rather just be bad at it, actually. Yeah. I'd, ra- I'd rather just learn the hard end. way like everyone else. This is humiliating. I'm too old to not have like had this experience. <laughs> no, I mean, Ugh. look, I think that it's actually uh, there's like some poll um, and there are t- like a good amount of college students who had not been sexually active. So like, I don't know, like 40 percent. Is that one of those millennials are ruining sex in college? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're killing sex. We're killing sex. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, look, you know, it's really I, I just don't think people should feel bad about that. Because no. well, in know. the moment I felt bad because I was literally watching five girls perform oral sex on well, <laughs> like objects. And I was like, them. um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. They were just so eager to show me. Right. They, right. Yeah. I mean, I, it sounds kind of like they were. Well, I've just never I mean, felt more like wholesome and chat like chaste yeah. in my whole life. Yeah. I was like, well, well, I am going to heaven and all of you sluts did you- are going straight <laughs> well, to hell. I was a little bit naive in college, too. Like I was in my friend's dorm room and like she had one of those like uh Pill, you know those like like pill organizer things for yes. the birth control that's like in a little round the plastic circle, one? circle. Oh, yeah. oh I like the round one Those and are I cute. thought it was a compact and like like oh this is a this is an interesting like compact and she's like the fuck are you doing oh and <laughs> you're I, just like messing up her right, entire right just like oh tic tacs no no I, I didn't do that I didn't do that so I, I picked it up I was like oh what is this because I thought it was an interesting little portable mirror or something she's she told me very patiently but a little bit you know tersely that's my birth control please put it down 
<laughs> and that's it's important that learned. I take that in order. Yeah. And you're really fucking with that. I'm shaking it like, oh, it rattled. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to like blow into it like one of those pitch like yes. whistles. <laughs> like one of those little uh, games where you try to get the little oh, the pieces ball. in the <laughs> hole. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah, that was that was a good uh, learning experience. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Um But truly your freshman year college dorm, I think, is such a safe place to just be like Cause that's really the first place you learn how to like throw up after you've had a night out of drinking. Like, you know, like that's kind of like mm-hmm. the first place where you're like, okay, I'm just, go- this is where, this is my safe mm-hmm. like practice zone to be an adult, kind of like a discovery <laughs> zone like or a Chuck E. Cheese. It's like, it's like yeah. an adult, like um ball pin or something oh, where for, you could just dive yeah. in and get lost in I, it for a little bit. Not but then for come me out. because, so when I was a freshman in college, I looked like I was maybe, I don't know. 14 15 yeah. maybe yeah. a little older i don't know but young and yeah. i was also a year younger um than everyone in actuality so i looked quite young and i was sort of an idiot so um people felt like it was kind of fun to yank my chain a little bit yeah. uh, so Aww. like someone uh, my actually my best friend gave me this shot glass full of he was like here try this and it was like i thought it was water Uh, it was pure vodka and that is an interesting flavor when you've never tried it before and then also another friend (laughs) uh (laughs) another friend i was like looking at this bottle of southern comfort i was like so that's an alcohol right and she's like yes it is an (laughs) alcohol and i was like does it taste good and she's like it's great it's mild and delicious so i i drank i took, took a big gulp of it and I thought she had poisoned me. I thought it was just like <laughs> I thought it was like a joke where she put something hot in there, like to like some sort of like pepper or something. And it's like no, no, no. That's just like what. That's how alcohol tastes. That's yeah. what it is. And Southern Comfort also burns more than other. Yeah, I think it's probably. Um, I don't know. I like Southern Comfort. So I'm like, mm, that sounds no, good. It's got some of the I weird think it's cinnamon gross. whatever. In yeah, it, right? I think it's gross, but yeah, it definitely. Oh, we were about to soak it with lime. Ugh. I yeah that's they gave those out. That's sprint. why I have heartburn. Yeah. Like this is why I have chronic heartburn all the time, day in and day out. <laughs> because when I was so in college, I drank like fucking Jose Cuervo Gold, Ugh. Fireball, and Southern Comfort. Why You're didn't gonna die. why didn't anybody pull me aside and be like, "Hey, you are ruining your esophagus." <laughs> yeah. And yeah. all of your shit inside of you. It's actually got a little piece of glass in it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if there was fiberglass in Fireball, I would completely believe that. You make it uh, with asbestos. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I would believe. I mean, there's Goldschlager that has little. Yeah, gold that's true. I I can't drink Mike's Heart anymore because that was oh. Sort of, oh. that was my beverage of choice in college. And the thing oh, is, so I would get gross. sick to my stomach after like half of a one. I'm like, wow, I have a low tolerance. No, it's because it's, no, it's so almost sugar. solid sugar. Yeah, it's God, just- it's just, it's so funny. Like, dude, I got so fucked up on Mike's heart. I can't even drink that <laughs> shit. If I even smell it, it makes me sick. <laughs> it's disgusting. It's, it's, oh. it's my freshman year of college, my uh, roommate, current roommate who went to college with me still makes fun of me for this i drank a lot of um whipped cream flavored vodka oh my god didn't we <laughs> all uh, didn't we oh, all oh it's just got the it's thought awful. of it now like i said that now and i was like I they gonna... make that for underage drinking like there's no no one Obviously. over the age of 21 has ever purchased a whipped cream no. vodka unless they're buying it for somebody who's younger than them no of course that is like training wheels on a bike why would why would any like person who has tasted other alcohols yeah. and like is fine with them go to the whipped also, cream one That's- i'm sorry i have not had a single jello shot that doesn't taste like disgusting rubber it's mm. I, I don't know. It's always <laughs> gross. Bridget seems to disagree. Uh, Sorry, to describe what Bridget just did with her face, she kind of gave this look of like, hmm, a jello shot sounds good right now, actually. No, it, it absolutely does not. I... Her eyes dripped. To I, well, you no, smiled. You really smiled at, the, at the sound of Jello like, shots. I don't. Like, mm. I don't like Jello shots. I think they're well, stupid. You well, you don't like slugs, so I would imagine the yeah. It's the same the, thing. The I think, texture might be the same. I don't like same. Jello in general, but. I don't. I would prefer there no alcohol in it. Uh, no, I'm just trying to think. Maybe because this is embarrassing too. Every time I've taken a Jello shot, I don't think I like have registered what it has tasted like. If no, I'm at the yeah, point just where right I'm down. taking a Jello yeah. shot, you take it like a pill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hold my breath, like pinching my nose, and like, yeah. well, no, I actually chew it, and it's terrible. 
And well, yeah, it's your oh, first mistake. Yeah, yeah you, you just can't gotta. Chew there it. was once a Jello shot someone gave me that had whipped cream on top. That's why I brought it up. It oh. was just like, well, whoever uh, came up with this just doesn't understand what the human mouth can, is capable of doing. <laughs> <laughs> because it, I That's was like, all right, I, gotta I, work I have some roommates from college who can show you exactly what a mouth is capable oh, of doing because I've seen some fucking shit. Um, is it, I think to bring it, circle it all back, isn't that called a blow jab shot or there's some yes it's like it's, yeah. it's a what? liquid shot and you're supposed it's a, it's to not and now jello. i'm doing it for you girls right now it's, um, it's a jello shot it's, it's not like a in a je- shot glass it's, and there's whipped cream on, on top, top and, and you don't use your hands yeah. you just like go down on it and then pick it up with your teeth and knock yeah. it back yes yeah. as a joke i feel yeah. so, like like talking <laughs> right now, i feel like such a prude because just all of this disgusts me and makes me angry at the younger generation. Oh, I just don't know and if I could. Yeah. I don't know if I have the the talent to do that. Like, uh, no, okay. Uh, the only it, reason I'm, I'm gonna get a fucking comment about this. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a creepy dude in my well, Twitter DMs. It's just it's second. like it makes me feel feel like it would make me gag. So anyone yeah. who would be able to do that, I'm but like trying mad to pick at. Up, like just the pure science of like picking up something glass with your teeth yeah there's no and friction then, there yeah and then like it's just so it's and just it's like supposed to be it's i guess it's supposed to be like hot and sexy but like if i did that it'd come no. out my no, nose the, the only <laughs> i'd throw up the, the face i make after i do a shot would completely eradicate any sexy thing right. that had happened but just <laughs> but seconds your face before actually sort of like shifts like 90 degrees yeah. and then like inverts a little bit and i put my chin all the way in so i have like seven chins yeah. underneath me and they kind of shake like um, a yeah, bullet pit bull, yeah. like, <laughs> kind of looks like a, a like a turtle receding into <laughs> yes shell. exactly uh, if i'm gonna blow up sarah's spot for a moment and mine as well that's what this podcast Jesus. is about there was one time where sarah and i and another friend at and uh who will remain nameless and uh <laughs> and a bar- yes. we're at a bar that will also remain nameless otherwise we'll never be allowed to go back to this bar they all listen to up. this they listen to this <laughs> oh we were at this bar and someone had ordered one of our our other friend our our anonymous friend had ordered shots for all of three of us and we all took these shots and in a row we had no business taking shots at this point in the night. No. And in a row, all of us threw up at that bar. Oh. Yeah. Secretly. Yeah. Like, all just Wait, like. Wait, secretly? The, secretly. The image How? is like we all went it, back with our heads with the shot and then put our heads directly down to throw up immediately onto the floor at the bar. Yeah, like, was, didn't even make an attempt to like go anywhere okay. else. And we just all kind of came back and we're like, did you guys just throw up? Like, yes. <laughs> so we in sync did a shot. And I think we were doing a shot of like rail room temperature whiskey. Like, yeah, it, it was, was really bad. It was like I would have been, crow. if I was, was there, I'd been so angry at you because like. Oh, everyone should be angry at us. That's not an okay thing to do. <laughs> I can't believe we got away with it though. <laughs> Because so like, like it's not an okay thing to I do ever. Like, you should be angry. I feel like I have like sympathetic vomit oh, the, response. So yeah, like if uh, someone else does it and oh, like I yeah, smell yeah. it and I see it and hear the sounds, it's like it makes me want to do it too. Because that it's will like, remain oh. the best comedy bit to me ever is sympathetic vomit response. Where like people yeah. are like, I, you're gonna do it, so I'm gonna do it, and then mm-hmm. like everyone's gonna do it. Right. And, uh, it's always funny to me. I actually uh, got. I actually learned a little um, how to get out of taking shots. If everybody wants another hot tip from this episode of <laughs> Hot Tips, because uh, I was like, I literally have acid reflux all of the time, so I cannot do shots yeah. at all. So you know when everyone's head goes up to take the shot, you, you do you the over the shoulder? No, oh, I take okay. the shot and I put it in front of my face and I go up with it, but I pour the shot glass upside down dump the shot on the floor and then by the time yeah, everyone comes back down I like just go, well I always tell people don't buy me shots don't buy me but yeah. you know there's always some other no come on we're doing right, it I'm like save it. your seven dollars or at least your seven dollars yeah. and don't give it to me yeah. and if you I force just it in lie my hand and say that if I take it with my medication I'll die <gasps> Shit, that's so good. That's better because I mean, damn it's it. partially true. You're ruining the floor. Uh, it's partially oh, true because like my the floor. my medication isn't super compatible with alcohol. I won't yeah. die. I'll just get real sleepy. But I tell yeah. them I'll die, and then it's it's yeah. all good because they don't want to kill me. Oh, generally speaking, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a good smart. one. That's a good. No, yeah, I've just like, been making. You want a me mess. to end up like Heath Ledger? Is that what you want? <laughs> Is that what you want, <laughs> friend? Someone I called friend. Yeah, that's a good one. I, when I started taking medi, I I also super don't think with medications that I'm on, I am supposed to be drinking. And I remember thinking this because started taking it in college, and then I would just throw up foam anytime I had a beer for a little while, um, mm. which seemed bad. Um, 
Yes. Bad. What? I would throw. You throw foam. <laughs> foam. 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 Uh, I thought you were going to come in with like the scientific explanation for foam. why that happened. You've never done that? So, yes, I have thrown a foam. You've thrown a foam? I've thrown a foam. So I know why dogs do that. And it's because they get a bile buildup. And so they'll like if they don't eat. And this then, like, they get a bile. With my body that I should be concerned and, and, about. Well, we don't produce bile like like dogs do. We don't have just a bile duct that. Well, produces I beg to bile. differ. I, yeah, I, I have quite a bit of bile. <laughs> <laughs> but and worms. Uh, I mean, we well, we do we do produce bile, but not in the same way that dogs, dogs do. do. Where yeah. it's like so so we produce it whenever we eat. Mm. It triggers the bile duct to produce bile in our digestive. Right, tracked and all that those like mm. weird noodly things that go on in there gross but with dogs they just produce it regardless of whether they eat so eating doesn't trigger it so if if they don't eat they'll have a bunch of bile already so there dog? is it bridget is it that you just have so much baking soda in your stomach and when I you drink constantly kind of when a vinegary I drink, I drink thing like a like a, sec- like a second like a second grader's yeah. volcano yeah. Yeah. exactly <laughs> are, are we mouth. entirely sure you yeah. are not made of paper mache uh well, when i say drinking my medication is a mento and what i was drinking was diet coke so <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what was happening i have to uh, medicate my halitosis hey it, yeah it stopped it stopped happening i That's good it it doesn't happen anymore good. uh but for like a couple weeks it was um i should have stopped one of the two things i was doing and probably the drinking know, but you know what i champed through it it is funny because like sometimes you're just so stupid about reactions and side effects to medication oh. that you don't even think about it so yeah. i was taking a medication in and it was causing some side effects for me. And so I was like, oh, I'll just stop taking it for a while yeah. because I don't like the side effects. Uh, like, because I was like sleepy in the mornings. I was like, oh, this is bullshit. I'll stop taking it, which you shouldn't do. No. If your doctor prescribes you medication, don't just stop taking it. Yeah. Take it another to the hot um, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <laughs> Talk to them about but uh, I did it. this because I, I uh, let me emphasize again, I was very stupid mm-hmm. and this was like it was at my first job that I got right out of college so um I was at work and like you know I I, around lunchtime or like you know I would just like feel really sick to my stomach and like just kind of like oh I have to go throw up now yes (laughs) and um like I was in a safe space here yeah Yeah, I know welcome and, and not this is not uh this is not like um wasn't it it wasn't in response to eating actually eating made it better but like Mm -hmm. like so like around breakfast time it would be fine because i would have eaten breakfast but then that space like before you've eaten lunch like where you don't have you're getting hungry and you don't have anything in your stomach what would happen is one of the side effects of immediately stopping this medication is you overproduce acid in your stomach Mm. and so when you don't have food in your stomach, like a dog who's producing bile, I was right. producing a lot of acid. Yeah. So then at a certain point, you know, it, it it has to get out of there. So if I didn't <laughs> eat lunch soon enough, then I would like go, like I would have to go throw up. And I didn't think anything of it. I was just like, this is weird. Well, yeah. I guess I gotta go. I guess I just have a stomach ache. You know, it's probably like acid reflux. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm like 22 and stupid as. I don't know how old you guys are. I'm sorry, but <laughs> 22 year olds are generally not very smart. No, I, no. I, I mean not. You you guys are fine. I love 22 year olds. Love you guys, I, but you but haven't. You, you don't babies. have. Yeah, dumbass. You asses. think you're immortal, and you don't. You haven't had the life experience of like like having threats to your health where you're like, ah, geez, I could just die anytime. <laughs> so you don't know yet that throwing up almost every week is not it's bad. normal. Yeah. So then I, I was like, and I was starting to get really distressed by it. I thought like, maybe it's the type of food I'm eating. So maybe if I switch to mostly bread, it'll be okay. And to be fair, the bread did help. Yeah, but, it soaks it up. But yeah, so I, I didn't. And then I was like, hmm. And here's, now here's the kicker, <laughs> you guys. Um, I worked doing educational materials for pharmaceutical companies, and so just, I knew a lot about pharmacology, and I was just too, like, lacked the ability to introspect and examine. Your, your hubris got the better right, of your knowledge. Well, I just didn't examine the, my life that much. To be fair, I was working like 60 to 70 hour weeks, so mm-hmm. I was a little bit you're constantly sleep deprived exactly. and sort of out of it and like yeah. at that point 
in the corporate world where you sort of depersonalize and you no longer exist right. as an individual you are, you with a free employee. will. You, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Where you don't so, even like recognize yourself when you look in the mirror. You're yeah. just like, this is a where vessel of which. Where you lay awake which- at night, you're like, I sleep to work and I work to sleep. <laughs> um <Wow>. so <laughs> so then i was like this is starting to annoy me because i'm missing meetings because i have to go vomit yeah oh my so God. so then i was like well now what's changed in my life oh well i've stopped this medication and one of the side effects of immediately stopping it is throwing up so maybe i shouldn't have done that and uh you know i i realized that part of the reason i'd done that is the work culture was so toxic that it was like any of the side effects like being a little sleepy in the morning right. so maybe being like five minutes late yep. yeah. and being sleepy at night where like i would have to go home a little earlier than they wanted me to right um i instead of like saying like you guys i need to be alive yeah. right. you can't do this to me it's unhealthy for my body right um i was like well then i'll just stop this medication that's good for me so i can work more at my job yeah <laughs> yeah And so I think that's bad for you. And that kind of made me actually realize, like, you know, maybe I should quit. Yeah. (laughs) So a good thing came out. So I went back on the 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 doctor medicine that's good for me. I stopped like the job that's bad. I stopped like yakking up and then I uh, was a lot healthier and then I also quit my job. There you go. And with the medicine you were taking, did you get rid of your butt worms? (laughs) <laughs> or do you still have them? Because by law, you have to slander. Libel is it libel or slander? If it's libel. spoken, slander. If it's libel. spoken, slander. Slander spoken. Libels written. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Slander. Okay. Well, <laughs> slander. Uh, total hearsay. But uh, I want to. I want to take it back because I feel like. Uh, feel like we. Do you have anything? We like skipped that, my entire childhood. Your your entire childhood. <laughs> we went straight. I mean. Not, hey, not, it's not that you have never it. stops being rough, oh, though. Oh, it never dare I say. stops, no. dare I say. But I did but have a fascinating childhood. You did, I know, and I, I am sure you did, and that's why I want to take it back a little bit. Right. And uh, so is there anything from your childhood that sticks out as weird? Oh, yeah. And, like, oh, I was a, that still hurts. I was a weird child. I, I, like I was saying, I think, before recording... Right. Um, if I had been born in like the 1500s, I'd be what they would consider a fairy child. Not in, <laughs> not being, you know, whimsical she, and stuff, but being weird, she's, uh, like she's being, yeah. being a weird goblin right. baby. That was yeah, it would ever. be the polite way of saying. Um. So, but I, I was a I was a very well behaved child, just like a little strange. So I tried to catch birds a lot when I was a kid. Um. My mom thought it was adorable because I oh, would birds chase. Are the, those are the animals that I fear. Oh, you fear them. I love them. Yeah. Katie's um, a big bird big person. Big bird, bird yeah. person. And that started as a little child. And, uh, you know, it's it's really, I, I have had a lifelong obsession with birds. So when I was a little kid, I would chase after them and even do the Roadrunner-esque things where I would get a box, <laughs> like a shoe box, and oh, yeah. a stick, stick up and put a little bird seed in there. And you then just were wait. a wily coyote. Never, never caught a bird. What was your intention oh, had you God. caught a bird? Just to hold it just in my hold. I will literally trade like lives with you i can't tell you the number of times i've had to re- physically remove a bird or multiple birds from my home due to my oh, cat man. bringing them in or them flying into my fireplace which happened i'm not joking two years ago <laughs> i woke up with I two birds i would love that life I, oh, I oh man gladly. if i woke up with two birds that would be great just birds like, know that i fear them mm-hmm. and i despise them yeah. and they Why antagonize fear them? me because i have woken up to the sound of a bird flying over my head like <gasps> It is the worst. Ooh, even just talking about it makes me so upset. They suck. Birds are terrible. I'm sorry. I know I you like birds, but I just cannot. I can't. I can't agree with you at all on this bird front. I, I avian, don't. I. I don't see you as a person anymore. <laughs> yeah. The I only, the only birds I fuck you. with are are big bird. Mm. Um, I like the porgs from the new Star Wars movies. Those are cool. Those are um, birds. I mean, well, they're, they're te- fake birds. They're technically they're like puffins. puffins. Yeah, they're <laughs> like puffins. Um, and then like occasionally I will see a bird and be like, well, that's an okay bird. But like the city birds, I don't like at all. I love all birds. Um, oh, again, <laughs> you can literally move into my last apartment because yeah. the, them, <laughs> them motherfuckers are in my yeah. house all the time. Did you want to keep them as pets? Were you like, I just did wanted you ever to, or you just- I just wanted <laughs> to hold them, I think. But when I was older, I got, um, uh, 
parakeets as pets. Okay, yeah. And it was a humbling experience because parakeets are very cliquish. So if you have a pair of them, oh, which is responsible. Did your own parakeets exclude you? Yes. From their- <laughs> okay, and see, um, here you are liking birds they mean and they're just mean. little bitches. <laughs> yeah, they, they were kind of mean girls because like they'd be like doing their little, like they'd be chattering to each other like and like being going. They're <laughs> loud. They're very loud. And then like I'd walk into the room and they'd be, go quiet and <gasps> look over they their shoulders. They about like, you. Like, that is amazing. Wait, I, don't parakeets live to be like 80 years old? No. <laughs> You're thinking of parrots. Oh. What's the difference? A it's, lot. It's Parakeets are dumb and parrots are very smart and yeah. they have a long lifespan. Mm, see, they're birds, so I just think they're all dumb and <laughs> disgusting. And they yeah, all have worms. Are, crows are really yeah. smart too, right? Crows are, corvids are smart, so crows and ravens. Oh, right, yeah. um, parrots. Well, ravens um, can deliver mail. I know that much. <laughs> From 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 te- television, yeah. And books. wait, what? Ravens? What are you talking about? Right? Don't ravens deliver messages? Pigeons. And shit? Oh, a carrier pigeon. That's right. Oh my right. god! Who Go. the? F- who are you? <laughs> I'm st- one, I said I'm stupid, and two, I don't like birds. Uh, Clearly, <laughs> don't like birds. Uh, Let's talk about slugs. I, I can dig slugs. No. Yeah, that's right, Bridget. Right back in your court. No, uh, no. Uh, that is really funny. No, but, but good also, for you. I will literally send every bird that comes my way to you. I'm happy to <laughs> know that, you yeah. because mail I, it for real. I will call you the next time they're in my yeah. apartment. Send oh, a carrier oh, pigeon with yeah. another bird. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna put a but, bird on a pigeon's neck. I also Ew. like. I would also, but I was able to catch lizards, so I caught a lot yes. of lizards um, and kept them as pets. I loved insects, so like oh, yeah, grasshoppers, dogs. and um, I was. You were just you were the bug collector. Kid. I loved, uh, yeah. I, I I even didn't mind like daddy long legs. I would. Hold oh, those. I love a daddy long leg. Um, and <laughs> I went through a brief period of arachnophobia when I was trained by society that I'm not supposed to like them. <laughs> and then yeah. I realized society was wrong. And yeah, now, spiders now are now the I'm shit. Not, yeah, I don't. I'm not scared of spiders anymore. I'm still have a healthy fear of black widows and brown recluses, which we would get a yeah. good amount of those. Um, but also because I've seen necrotic tissue resulting yeah. from spider bites and that's that, not that good. shit is a fun google I image search i hate bugs in general yeah. i think bugs are gross i've made i've fully put cups uh over bugs in my room and made someone else take them out yeah after like people have walked into my room and been like hey what's that cup that's been on your floor for months yeah. and i was like oh there's a bug under there that i mm. refuse to move i'm uh, okay with most there i have a few exceptions for bugs that i absolutely hate so <laughs> Parasites, any, any well, kind of sure. like paras- I actually find them very yeah. interesting in a sort of intellectual way. But if there's like a tick yeah. on my dog, I'm just angry, full of anger for that yeah. tick because it's hurting my dog. Um, dogs, over cockroaches, dogs. I can't. They're nope. too. They're so greasy. big. I just they're, kill them. I can't kill them because I'm afraid of the white goo that comes out yep. of them. So I put them. I do the cup thing. Once I had like this this jar that was for holding dog treats, and then. Like my dog alerted me to this giant cockroach and I caught it in the jar. I took the entire jar outside and threw it in the dumpster. It was alive. <laughs> it was a mean thing to do because it, the cockroach was still alive in there and it, there's no way it could, you yeah. know, it was going to just like slowly. Right. Asphyxiate. That's why I just smashed But them. I can't, I cannot deal with, they have weird, like they're just oily and there's they're white, so, go- full of white goo. They're so gross. Can't Ugh. deal with it. I yeah. can't deal with house centipedes. I can deal with regular oh, yeah. centipedes, but oh. the house centipedes, their legs are too long. Yes. And yes. Um, yes. silverfish. Oh um, my God. Fuck silverfish. They are, because they're they gross. are dusty. They're real gross. They're dusty. And it's the ones that are just disgusting, I think, that Ear I don't like. Earwigs. Earwigs, I can't. I don't like nope. them. There aren't. They don't dis- revolt me as much. They're just a little creepy looking. I don't don't particularly enjoy them. But almost every other insect, I'm basically okay with. So I'll pick yeah. up with my hands if they're in my apartment to Oof. remove it. Oof, um, you're, you're bold. But like, or not not a spider because I don't want it to bite me. But I'm not <laughs> really all that scared of a spider. Like if it's on a on a. Um, piece of web like I'll pick up the web and then like so spider, it up. Yeah. spiders eat the bugs that annoy me the most so I let the spiders stay with me they're cool in my apartment yeah if they're if they're a certain type of spider I'll let them chill out but if they're like a little big I, I am easily startled so I'll be startled sure. by a spider yeah. but like um, yeah generally they're allowed to stay inside unless yeah. they're so you're just like bug kid growing up oh yeah too. you were you were the bug kid yeah and then you had, like the eyewitness books too like those oh kind of i love things. those yeah, yeah I, I had one that was like on in like 
like stuff that's like too slow to see with your own eyes. And there's like <gasps> one about like um, uh, mushrooms, like. Oh, I hate mushrooms. I get real gross out by mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, the they stink horn mushrooms. Yeah, I, they are sort of like ground wieners. I understand yeah. that. Uh, there was like a, a time lapse video of like a bunch of different mushrooms growing, they, and yeah, I yeah, they hate look watching they it. look like yeah. stinky ground wieners. So yeah. I sort of understand, but yeah. I do think they're cool. Yeah, um, I'm a fan of stinky ground wieners. <laughs> um, and then like I had, I also like to play French Revolution. And I was which one? Well, the 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 big one. What side? What side were you on? <laughs> well, I was definitely one of the. Uh, well, so it's complicated because yeah. I. What it's happened nuanced. is I I saw the wishbone car the you know the wishbone yes. where it's the yes, little yes, yes. Jack Russell Terrier that taught yeah. us about literature. Um, and he did one that was like a tale of two cities, but it was called a tale of two kitties. Oh. <laughs> Um, tail would have been enough though for them I think oh yeah tail um, maybe because that is what it was I'm not sure my memory is not oh, why perfect not both? But, uh, yeah why not both uh, and then so I just would reenact that so I made this guillotine out of a, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was basically just a basket that was on a hinge and then I would like have uh, the string pull it up and then the basket there was no blade on it it was just basically just created the fact that you would think to make this yeah, though right and then and then I would have my but here I wasn't a psychopath so what I would do is one of my stuffed animals would be found guilty of crimes I didn't have a great understanding of what the revolution was about just that they were killing people left and right and but then he'd be saved at the last minute oh. um, but by, by like a, a, a an order from the king. I didn't understand <laughs> yeah, the French say, Revolution. Yeah, we're mixing a lot of <laughs> things here. Yeah. Didn't know the actual political movements but, behind yeah. it. Didn't know sure. what a J Jacobin was. Didn't yeah. really understand the zeitgeist of Lame the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just thought it was, just thought guillotines was cool. And I liked the idea of someone about to die being saved at the last minute. It's very minute. like romantic. Yeah, it's like it's the literature like, aspect right, of right. that like, time period. Right. You, yeah. You were, that's, it's a classic weird kid. Just yeah. classic. 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 I was a classic but weird zero kid. Zero in on the things that you specifically like and then like getting really into that <laughs> and then later being like, what the, f like why was I outside playing ball or something? Yeah. No, I, I'm proud of small no. me. Yes. I did no, a good no. job. Yeah. You, you zeroed in, like you said, you knew your interests and you went yeah. wholeheartedly into them. I also wrote a, um, a, a fake textbook on a fake animal called a zook um Ooh. i invented you wrote a textbook you wrote yeah. fan fiction so it was well look it was uh, about a uh, a fake organism called a zook which is a tiny animal that is not visible to the human eye that can carry like five thousand times its own weight cool they communicate by rubbing their feelers together basically uh, like ant. basically <laughs> like ants but they're very intelligent and invisible and cool. they only have like four legs and they stand upright How and they long have was your little Jesus. societies. Oh, well, it was um, <laughs> 10 pages. I'm not, it's not like a, wasn't, you know, I was like a eight year old. That's like quite um, a lot to write lot. about something. Fake. Yeah. <laughs> but so I wrote this whole thing. It's like identification guide for Zooks and, and how, you know, they, um, they like to farm using lint or whatever, but, uh, and I would come to school with my little, with my little North American guide to Zook identification oh or whatever. God. And, uh, cause we had those, we had those books, those like, I don't know if they were Audubon or, or something, but the identification guide right. to yes. insects, yes. to birds, of to course. plants. Um, and I read through all of those and I loved them. And so I made my own and I'd go to school and teach my oh. my peers about it. Now, one of them was informing me this was fake. And I was saying, well, no, it's it's real. They're they're a real thing. And I knew they weren't. It was just <laughs> yeah. I was the pride. I wasn't being a fucking wet blanket. I was right. Getting, right. I was an eight year old with a 
sense of fun and yes. wonder and in this so world. She, so this kid went to one of the teacher's aides and said, "Like, make Katie stop talking about this. Tell her that it's fake." And oh, the teacher's aide came up to me and said, "You need to stop this. They aren't real." <gasps> wow. I what? don't That's understand what is wrong with people if a little yeah. kid invents a book about a fake animal right. and give them extra credit details their their dietary habits it's so nerdy you, it's so nerdy it's, uh, yeah they're going to have enough social problems <laughs> yeah uh that you don't need to the, contribute to that uh, as an yeah. adult as i'm bullying you right about right it. <laughs> you what you do is you give them a sympathetic look and just pat them on the shoulder right. and go yeah. like you're going to have a rough time ahead of you. <laughs> it will get better from here. Yeah. Here's a sticker for maybe, your creativity. Maybe someday you'll have a podcast where you talk about weird, hey. weird stuff. Hey, and now you do. And who's laughing now? Well, sometimes people at me, but you know, but, also yeah. me. But also we, and we, you know, we grow up so, and uh, yeah. wow. appreciate our little nerd selves. Exactly. Um, Thank you, Katie, so much for... Learned a lot, I think, yeah. this, this the, one. This we, is very educational. Yeah, we <laughs> went really all over the place on this one, and I loved it. Um, tell people where they can find you, all the places. Oh, boy. Well, let's see. So, first of all, please listen to my new podcast called Creature Feature, produced by How Stuff Works and iHeartRadio. Uh, we talk about weird animals yeah. and how they relate to human behavior. Yeah, so, like zooks. Yeah, yeah, like zooks, exactly. Learn about made-up animals. No, they're all real animals yeah. and made-up people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Katie Golden, K-A-T-I-E-G-O-L-D-I-N. Excuse me, Time Warner Cable. That is how you spell <laughs> my name. Yep. It's not Kathleen Wolden. Um and you can also find me where I am a bird on Twitter at Pro Bird Rights. I know. Are you really? Yeah. I, I was you waiting for this son moment. Son of a bitch. But I know that account because <laughs> it comes up as a recommended thing. And I'm like, I'm not going to follow this. Oh, oh boy. She, I was waiting for this moment to oh, happen. Boy. When, you you <laughs> set us up to fight. I, yeah, oh, I set dude. this up. We'll uh, be above that, though. We won't Can I call a creature feature and then we can debate the pros and cons of birds and <laughs> I'll I'm, eviscerate you i'm not sure you're allowed to, to be within <laughs> i'm getting a, a restraining order against you the one the only thing i have against birds is that they're gross and they personally annoy me often and that's all i mean they're great for the environment and you know they eat a bunch of bugs that i don't like so go birds i, I can't guess, look but, you in the eye yeah. right now let's just wrap this up <laughs> Let's do it. You can uh, find this podcast on social medias uh, at Rough Stuff Pod on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. And you can find me on Twitter at Bridget Tweets. Um, and you can find me on Twitter at SK underscore Griffith. Although now I'm thinking about cutting ties with Twitter if they're going to be such a <laughs> pro bird. And it is called Twitter. So yeah, you yeah. kind of walked into yeah, that yeah, one, yeah, didn't yeah. you? Damn it. Yeah, that was <laughs> everywhere. That pro bird agenda. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs>